There we go. Hey, boys and girls. How's it going? Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. Yeah, we are oh, back. Yeah. We, We're back. We are using our friend's internet again. Yes. Um. So big shout out to our bestie with the Wi-Fi because That's right. we would not be here without it because we still don't have yeah. internet. AT&T assures me every time I talk to them that it'll be in next week. And that's been going on for a couple of months now. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. You know, one yeah. day, one day we're going to. One day this. soon we'll have internet at our home like normal folks, but not this day. Yeah, you know, first world problems. Yeah, I understand. We know. Okay. Yep. So again, welcome back. We will be taking as many questions as possible. Obviously we can't answer everything because. There's so many awesome people that come watch us that it would just yep. take us 24 hours to do that. So yep. if you see an obvious newbie question in the comments, reach out and respectfully and lovingly, you can, you have our permission to answer their question or point them to a resource, a YouTube video, an article. Uh, we, we are 100% dedicated to growing this tribe of people who believe in a proper human diet and who believe that, the human body by design is it should be healthy and vibrant and vigorous it should not be riddled with disease and so absolutely help your uh, little keto brothers and your little carnivore sisters and everybody else in between we encourage that 100 percent. yep um all right make sure that you guys are smashing the thumb i know you get into it and reading the comments and listening, but hitting that thumb button really helps us, especially with the YouTube algorithm to Absolutely. reach more new people. And also if you're new, <clears throat> let us know you're new in the comments. Yep. Remind your aunt right now, because she's forgot that we're live every Monday night at 7 PM. Mm -hmm. So shoot her a text message. And as always, you're welcome to share this on your social media. If you think that it would help somebody. All right. Got some questions? Christina says, I've been on carnivore or ketovore for a month now, and I've lost 13 pounds, loving it and feeling great. I love Way it. Way to go, Christina. Beautiful. Beautiful. Where are you guys all watching from this evening? What city? What what state? What country? Where are you at in the world? Uh, Joel says, no question, but I wanted to say thank you from the Caribbean. I'm down 50 pounds. Wife is down 30. No more meds. Thank you from our heart. Well done. Absolutely. That's amazing. That's it. Now your job is to teach your friends and family how yeah. to get healthier. All right. Carla says, do you have a video on what levels of electrolytes someone on keto should be taking? Uh, no, because it's different for literally every single human out there based on your age, your body weight, uh, your hormone status, your gender to a certain degree. The beautiful thing about electrolytes, uh, like, if, for example, keto chows, electrolyte drops or keto chows, mineral drops, which also contain electrolytes. The beauty of those is, is that if you get a little bit too much magnesium or a little bit too much zinc, your body's just going to pass that through in your waist. You're going to urinate it out, poop it out. If you have normal kidney function, then as long as you're just using the electrolyte drops to taste, you're never going to get too many. And so I, every time I have uh, a glass of sparkling water or a cup of coffee, I just put some of the, the mineral drops, which also has electrolytes. And so you, you basically just say, okay, do I have diarrhea? Then I'm using too much magnesium. Am I having leg cramps at night? I'm not using enough magnesium or potassium that you, you listen to your body. Your body will give you feedback. By the way, <clears throat> did you know that Sonic has sparkling water? Yep. I didn't know that they did. He ordered it and I was like, we're going to tell him he don't, they don't have that, yep. but they do have you it. Just tell so. him you want the soda water with none of the syrup and then yeah. you get club soda and then you can get lime or lemon or whatever in it if you want to mm -hmm. well done sonic uh lily hey lily hey, lily kane if you guys don't follow lily she is awesome and i'm obsessed with her yep. youtube channel yep. i like binge watch her videos all the time anyway and as soon as we have internet i'm doing a live with lily. yeah we'll try to do a live with lily um she wants to know if someone is insulin resistant does that mean that they are pre-diabetic not necessarily and that's an excellent question uh, and so you can frame it two ways. Lily. You can say, are you insulin resistant or are you hyperinsulinemic? Because they effectively mean, not exactly mean, but effectively mean the same thing. And you can be hyperinsulinemic for up to a decade before you even become pre-diabetic, much less type 2 diabetic. Uh, insulin, and that's why I, in every video I talk about this, I tell patients, because doctors won't listen to me, 
get a C peptide check, get a fasting insulin check because your insulin level is going to start spiking up years before your hemoglobin A1C starts to elevate. And, and so I actually did a lecture. I forget where it was at. One of the <laughs> keto conferences a long time ago <laughs> in a world far, far away uh, that you can predict type two diabetes 10 years before it happens by looking at a C peptide level, which is a proxy marker for insulin or a fasting insulin level, which you have to be fasting to do. Uh, and, and so the, it, it greatly precedes prediabetes or type 2 diabetes by years that you'll become hyperinsulinemic. Uh, Deanna is on Facebook with a question. Nisha, you've mentioned in previous uh, Q&As that you use beef tallow as moisturizer. Please say more and where can we buy what you're using? So you can find, I got mine from a, a lady who was at the homesteading event that we were at. She makes her own, but you can find it on Etsy. And there are several people who make it homemade and they actually render their own beef tallow, which is pretty awesome. It just... I have a chronically dry legs. I don't know if that has something to do with my hypothyroidism or what, or if I'm just genetically prone to dry legs. That's the only thing that's ever helped. Everything else looks good for like two minutes, but then it looked crusty and dusty all over again. So <clears throat> highly recommend beef towel. I don't know why I'm so phlegmy today. Phlegm. <laughs> you got phlegm. Um, Jan says, been mostly carnivore for a year and my ferritin levels keep rising. At six months, it was 168. Last, it was 250. Uh, could this be from too much red meat? No, there's probably something else going on. Ferritin is a, is a marker for multiple things. I'm not saying to completely ignore your ferritin level, uh, but it's not that that's not going to be a sign of that you're eating too much meat. But that is something that probably needs to be investigated by your health care provider uh, because there are other things that can lead to an elevated ferritin level. Nikki, nature videos are amazing from Hashi's to now. My thyroid meds have been all over the place and I've gotten them leveled out so I can start my keto again. Thanks for all I do. Oh, thank you. Well done. Way to go. Hashi women Love and it. men. Men can have <clears throat> Hashimoto's too. 100%. All right. Deborah, I've experienced hair loss. Um, my husband did pass away eight months ago. So sorry, uh, but I yeah. am also strict keto. Yeah. So any huge catastrophic event, especially for women, can uh, cause some hair loss. There's no doubt about that. That's well known in the in the literature. Uh, any diet, any diet whatsoever where you're losing uh, weight fairly rapidly you're going to have some hair loss. And I've got a YouTube video that really goes into the science behind that. But yeah, you've got two reasons to be having hair loss. The hair loss is temporary. It's not going to be permanent. Your hair is going to come back in and be glorious like this one's eventually. Um, Ellen says, I'm about to have my kidney removed. It's completely blocked and causing pain. Can I stay carnivore with one working kidney? Yeah. So what you what your question is implying, you want to protect your one kidney because that's all you got left for the rest of your life. And that's absolutely correct. You want to protect that kidney like gold and platinum combined. And so what you want to never, ever have for the rest of your life is an elevated blood sugar level or an elevated insulin level. You don't. You want both of those numbers to be normal every minute of every day that you can get them to be normal. And the way you're going to do that is to eat a very, very low carbohydrate diet for the rest of your life. Eating meat is not bad for your kidneys. Eating meat is good for your kidneys. There, I know there's a myth in the medical community and out there with a lot of health gurus that, oh, meat's hard on your kidneys. That's total bullshit. OK, I'm sorry to be blunt, but that there's just no truth to that at all. But this myth will not die. So if you want to protect that kidney, eat lots of fatty meat and keep your carbohydrate count very, very low for the rest of your life. Thank you, Miss Linda. Um, mommy says my CAC is zero, but I'm still kind of worried about my dense LDL three of 372 and dense LDL uh, four of 165, but my triglycerides are 40 and my HDL is 77. Yeah, you're worrying about stuff that you don't need to worry about. If you've got a CAC of zero, a great triglyceride and a great HDL cholesterol level, uh, that's a grand slam home run. You win, okay? Stop worrying about, uh, you're, you're way off in the weeds worrying about minutia. And I know probably some healthcare provider or, or online gurus got you worried about that. 
that is like not even a 1% problem. That's like a, a one-tenth of 1% problem. Don't worry about that. Keep doing exactly what you're doing. They got those number, your numbers where they're at right now. Rena, um, she says she's interested in adding Spanish subtitles and she would love to do it. Um, there used to be a way that YouTube would let me allow you to do that, but they've taken that feature off YouTube yeah. now. And so Which is super frustrating. Yeah, it's really frustrating because I would love for uh, a native Spanish speaker to do that. I have to actually pay. I use a service called Rev.com to subtitle some of my videos, not all of them, because it would get you know, ungodly expensive. But I would love to let you do that. But now what you are welcome to do is just take my video and put Spanish subtitles on it and put it up on a, a Spanish YouTube channel. I, I'm never going to ding you for that <clears throat> I, because I'm my mission is to help everybody in the world eat a proper human diet and reap the health benefits that go along with that. So I'm never going to hit you with a copyright strike. I'm not, I don't, I don't do that, but there are, I've got people in India who transcribe my videos in Hindi and then put them up on their channel. I have people in Russia who do that uh, in Russian and put it on their personal channel. I, I love it when you do that. I'm not going to be offended if you do that. All right. Susie says, hello, I have Hashimoto's. My antibodies are over 2,000. I have so many symptoms, and recently, out of nowhere, uh, my anxiety is taking a toll on me. I'm not getting much sleep, and I'm dreaming every single night. I have a lot of videos on my channel. It's Nisha Loves It. If you just look up Nisha Loves It Hashimoto's, that should pull up all of my Hashimoto's videos. Um, some really good books out there that you should probably read. Uh, what's L. Russ's book? Yeah, I forget the exact title, but the the author's name is L E L L E R U S S. And she has an excellent book about thyroid health and how you can get jerked around by healthcare providers for years before you get a proper diagnosis and definitely before you get proper treatment. And I just want to say, you're not crazy. This is not all in your head. This is being caused by your Hashimoto's. Even if your other thyroid numbers are normal, if you have severe symptoms like this with Hashimoto's, you probably need thyroid replacement hormone and you definitely want to take care of the inflammation and autoimmunity uh, that may be being caused by your diet. Yeah. All right. Hey, Kraken. Kraken says, is tomato basil sauce healthy for keto? Well, there's a spectrum. All right. And for some of us, we can partake in a clean tomato basil sauce. And for some people, they're very sensitive to nightshades, tomatoes. Yep. Uh, so it's kind of a self thing. Like, yep. a, can you tolerate that if you can? Go yeah. for it, but pick the cleanest version or make your own. Yeah. And, and then also, you don't forget to count the carbohydrates. Yeah. And that's all you got to count, the, count carbs. the carbs and, and just see how you do with it. Yep. Victoria says carnivore for hiatal hernia and IBS. Yeah. 100%. Uh, I actually have a small hiatal hernia. And back when I was eating the standard American diet, it was awful. My reflux, heartburn, pain was terrible. Got a little, tiny bit better with paleo. Got 80% better with, with keto, and now, what am I carnivore, 23, 24 months now? And I, I haven't, I haven't well, taken, now. I have not taken, taken anything for heartburn in that period of time. Now, uh, carnivore is not going to cure your hiatal hernia. You, you will still have your hiatal hernia, but what you won't have is all the symptoms that go along with it, and it's pretty amazing. Kelly says, I've been doing carnivore, but lately I've added in nuts because that's what feels good. What are your thoughts on nuts? Well, for, for some people, nuts are have too many carbohydrates. They eat too many nuts. For some people, the phytates and the lectins in the nuts uh, will cause their immune system to flare up, uh, either leading to an autoimmune condition or aggravating an existing autoimmune condition that was previously silent because of your carnivore diet. Some carnivores can add a few nuts in from time to time, and it doesn't seem to affect them at all. Uh, nuts are full of minerals and vitamins, but many of these vitamins and minerals are, are literally unavailable for absorption because of the phytates and lectins and other phytochemicals in nuts. And so the, on paper, nuts look like just a nutrition powerhouse. But you got to understand, you're probably going to poop out about 80% of that nutrition and unabsorbed because of the it's locked up in the phytates and the, and the lectins. Yeah, nuts are tricky. A lot of people overeat them because yeah. they are so easy to just yeah. pop in your mouth. If we had to go 
and forage for them and crack them open yeah. and get them out of the shell we wouldn't eat probably maybe 10 15 before we were like this is not worth yeah. it but because they're easily accessible in a perfect little container for us to tote around then yeah. super easy for us to eat them now if you have an autoimmune disease or if you have Hashimoto's nuts probably are not your friend even though they are keto friendly yeah. they are not you friendly yeah. probably yeah so we, eating a few nuts from time to time is probably not a big deal at all uh, but coming from someone who personally has cracked black walnuts Okay. Uh, my grandmother can crack black walnuts, granny berry. She can crack them like a machine. Okay. She, she cracks well, she them out. She does have a machine. Well, yeah, but I mean, she, <laughs> she does that. She, it's a hobby. She loves it and she makes money. She sells them. But if you had to crack them out with a hammer, you would eat about three nuts and you'd be like the hell with that. That's dumb. I'm not doing that. I tried to make some money doing that when I was in college and luckily I had other sources of income or I would have starved to death. Steven, problem. I do great with every other day fasting, but I have meds prescribed that require to be taken with food. How can I accomplish this? Thanks. Yeah. Um, probably you're not going to be able to do every other day fasting. You'll uh, probably just have to do a long daily intermittent fast, maybe do 20 hours a day and then eat in a four hour window. And that way you can take your medicine and you can eat enough to, to get all the nutrition you need for the full day. But then you still got 20 hours of fasting that you're doing every day. Kyla says, I see people in the carnivore community eating sticks of butter. Is this beneficial or are they just misinformed? Uh, depends. I don't think there's anything wrong with eating a stick of butter. I think that it's probably unnecessary. I don't think there's any magic in butter, but butter is very rich in many vitamins and minerals and very, very rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, so I, a lot of people will talk about drinking fat and they want to lump butter in with the other liquid vegetable oils and, and fruit seed oils. And I don't think it's the same thing. I think butter is food. Okay. Butter is the best part of milk. And if you want to use a lot of butter, I think that's perfectly fine. I don't eat as much butter now as I once did, but a few years back uh, earlier in my keto journey, I would eat easy three quarters of a stick of butter a day. I put it in every cup of coffee it, the fat helped keep me satiated and helped me lose weight. I think butter is an excellent tool. I think it's a, a, a nutritional powerhouse. And I don't think there's anything wrong with eating as much butter as you want to eat. But it is not a necessary. It's no. not necessary. That's right. It's not necessary. <laughs> I think a lot of people come to this way of eating and see that and think, oh. I have to do that. Yeah. yeah. It's or not a requirement. Keto is stupid because they eat sticks of butter. Like not everybody does <laughs> yeah. that. Okay. There's no. just some people that they feel really good when they eat a lot of butter. And 100%. you know, who am I to yep. tell them not to do that? Yep. Uh, L says, should I drink the oil in canned cod liver? Is the fat content in the canned cod liver just from the liver or also the oil? That's I think a good it's, question. I think that the numbers on the side of the can are just from the liver itself. But the cod liver we buy is packed in cod liver oil. But make sure and verify that on the can of cod liver that you have. I could see some dumbass out there putting it in soybean oil or canola oil. Make sure it's in cod liver oil. Then it's 100% okay to drink that. Yeah. Uh, simple man. Been doing carnivore for 10 months and still have high blood pressure and no, no weight loss. Could sleep apnea be the cause? That could definitely be something slowing down your, your weight loss, 100%. Yeah, if you think you have sleep apnea, you need to go see your health care provider and get tested for it. Yes. Miss Linda, I'm in surgical menopause and I'm trying to lose weight. I'm mostly carnivore. Any further tips? Okay, look, this is interesting. I just watched an entire podcast. I've been watching a lot and reading a lot, guys. I'm getting my education. Go watch Dr. Jamie. And uh, Rachel Gregory, they did a podcast together and they talked a lot about women's health and keto. And it was a lot of good information. What she specifically said for women going through menopause is that keto is usually not enough and you got to do some working out. And that doesn't mean you go work out like Dr. Jamie, but it does mean you go walk, maybe go swim mm -hmm. if you enjoy swimming, ride a bike, do some jump rope, bounce on a trampoline, some form of activity, and that's going to help you out. Eating the low-carb ketogenic way for most women during menopause is just not enough. It's going to help, but maybe not enough. Yes. And that's Dr. Jamie Seaman, S-E-E. -E you can find her, Dr. Fit and Fabulous on Google, should find her. And then Rachel Gregory, that's the podcast I was like, it was really good. Lots of good information. Uh, Ashley, are you familiar with... Um, Ehlers-Donlos syndrome, and do you know if keto carnivore can help? Yeah, so 
Ehler, Ehlers Danlos just like lots of uh, congenital um, conditions and autoimmune conditions, you're you're not going to have the symptomology. In other words, the symptoms are going to be less severe. The uh, the disabilities are going to be less severe. It's not going to cure it. It's a genetic defect. But you are going to notice an improved quality of life by eating a proper human diet, regardless of what genetic condition you have. The able farmer. Oh, that's hey, cool. Farmer. Hey, farmer. I love it. Been carnivore seven months, down 64 pounds. Boom. I am concerned about low HDL. It's 35. How do I raise it? I'm 34 year old male and I eat lots of sardines. My triglycerides are 87 and my LDL is 149. Good man. Okay. So you're doing uh, lots of things right. There's two ways really to raise your HDL. One is to eat lots of fatty meat, which it sounds like you're doing. The second is to do vigorous, hard exercise. So lifting heavy weights, uh, like my friend does, or going out and getting wet with sweat using the chainsaw, cutting down trees like I do. That kind of heavy, heavy exertional work is going to help raise your HDL. As you put on more and more muscle, your HDL is going to get better and better. But uh, more fatty meat and lift heavy weights. That's that's. And now I'll tell you, some people just have a genetically low HDL. I I have my I have that little touch of genetics that keeps my HDL lower than I'd like for it to be. But with eating lots of fatty meat on a carnivore diet and then working out like a, a dog out in the in the in the forest, uh, my HDL is great now. Triclops says, Triclops. "Can keto help prevent?" or reduce tonsil stones? Maybe, maybe. I've never read any research about that, but just keep in mind, tonsil stones are not dangerous. I know they're a little bit they're annoying. They're annoying. I've they're annoying, I know, but they're not dangerous, and you do not need to be in the mirror with a needle trying to pick them out, okay? Just they're not dangerous. They're not bad for you. They, they, they cause no pathology whatsoever. Leave them alone, okay? You don't have to take them out. Uh, but with that being said, I, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't get big as quickly on a proper human diet. But you're probably predisposed to getting them and you're still going to get smaller ones. But don't worry about them. Forget to there. I know that's easier said than done. All right. Kelly says, what, if any modifications to a healthy keto diet should be considered for those uh, who are APOE3 slash None. Uh, regardless of what your APO status is, you need to eat a proper human diet. And I know there's a lot of gurus out there talking about this marker or that marker. Oh, well, yeah, but about this one. Yeah. First of all, the research verifying that these markers are actually crucially important is sorely lacking. First of all. Secondly, if you're a human being, you need to eat a proper human diet. And so when you put those two things together, it becomes immediately obvious that, okay, so uh, I, like in every live, I'm going to ask you, is your triglycerides, do they look good? Does your HDL look good? What about your A1C? What about your C-peptide? If all those numbers are good, then you're eating a proper human diet and you don't need to worry about those other little markers that five or 10 years from now with more research might be shown to be clinically crucial, but more than likely are going to be shown to have just been superfluous and nobody even talks about them anymore in five years. Uh, real quick, guys, make sure you hit that thumb button. If you're on Facebook, share this on your Facebook page, on your Facebook group. Uh, share it anywhere with a friend. 100%. Uh, but hitting that thumb button over on YouTube really helps us. So Absolutely. Also, if you're if this is the first time you've caught one of our lives, type new in the comments. And so and it, all you guys reach out and, and welcome your new Ph.D. friend. Kareem says, I've been doing carnivore since April and I lost about 10 pounds so far. Am I doing this right? I eat eggs, bacon, and steak. That's it. That's Boom. Fine. You, you can go ahead. Yeah. You can always add in a variation of meat. Yep. Seafood is a really good source yep. of meat. And then you also get a lot of minerals in there, which aren't in other meats. Chicken is fine, but a lot of people don't like it. Yeah. What else? Uh, when, when we say seafood, people immediately think about fish. Oh, swordfish and tuna. No. That's fine if you want a little bit of that. But what really the seafood I want you to add in is cod liver, is crustaceans, is mollusks. So oysters, mussels, uh, shrimp, 
scallops, sardines, sardines, small jumping. fish. Yeah, small fish. Absolutely. Small fish and then crustaceans and mollusks. Those are the seafoods that our ancestors probably scarfed up on a daily basis. Of course, if they could get a 200 pound swordfish, they wore, they wore him out. But that was not that easy to get back then. But they absolutely on the shoreline, if there were if there were any kind of snails, any kind of uh, crustaceans or mollusks, that's what they ate on a daily basis. And and so don't don't neglect that part of seafood. Uh, and then also, I was going to say one more thing. If you wanted to add in some liver, some organ meats, do not be afraid to try organ meats. They are always good for you. They're never bad for you. And you can start with a, a gateway organ like chicken liver. Everybody likes chicken liver, gateway right? Gateway organ. That is not a gateway organ. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> likes chicken livers. No. Everybody doesn't. Most everybody. I would say do, don't start with beef livers, my boy. Oh well, yeah, liver pate, liver mousse, mm, Braunschweiger, yeah. liver cheese, liver loaf. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, Big Midge says, "I just started carnivore and mostly rare filet mignon. Are you pro or anti the other foods I include? Organic buffalo mozzarella sounds good. Perrier, that's mm -hmm. fine. Apple cider vinegar gummies with four grams of sugar." Not so no. optimum. You garbage. should just do Put apple cider. Um, right now, get up. The Bragg's Put apple cider vinegar with the mother. Yep. That's optimum. Either real ACV or don't do the gummy capsule. All that stuff's foolish. Um, a diet Snapple. Yeah. Not optimum, but Switch if it's keeping club soda. if it's keeping you from you know going down the rabbit hole of a sugar, then you know use it as a tool, but try to work your way out of it. Dark chocolate. Um, not optimal for carnivore, but if you can tolerate it, then that's a you yeah. thing. A little piece, maybe twice a week, just for a, a treat. Okay, there's nothing magic about chocolate. They, people say, oh, these polyphenols, oh my God, it's this, it, it's the elixir of youth. No, it's all baloney. Yeah, but it's delicious. If you, that's right. So have a little square every now and then. Make that one bar you bought for $12 because it's 90% cacao. Make that last two weeks. And I, I don't think that's a problem. But if you're eating a bar a day, that's a problem. You're, you're a little bit dirty carnivore right here. Um, but, you know, if, you, if your goal is to clean yeah. it up slowly, then, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's no rush. Uh, I want to know something. I want to know how many of you guys are still addicted to diet soft drinks. Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, Diet Dr. Pepper, Diet Mountain Dew. Oh, I was going to say. Hey, excuse me. Do you want to be the pot? Or <laughs> you know, the I kettle? always mess up. Because they're both black. I, I ain't scared. Yeah. But it, Nisha and I, we're going to be posting a video where we're going to post it about how the trick that we used to break our addiction. We've talked about this multiple times. To, but we haven't made a video. No. Okay. But we're, we're going to make a video to show you stepwise how we did it. Uh, but I want to know in the comments how many of you guys are still got to have your diet fill in the blank every day? They're good alternatives. There are much better alternatives, and we're going to make a video about that soon. Yep. Yeah, there's several of you guys who are still hanging on to that. I understand. We get I it. I understand. We get it. Don't we nobody come out the gate doing this it. the purest but, and perfect yeah, way. I think step one is just admitting to yourself there is nothing good in this diet soda. There's nothing good in it. Nothing positive. I just like the taste. And once you've made that realization and said that in the mirror three times, then you're ready to go to the next step. And the next step will be, we'll show you in that video that we'll be posting in the next few days. Uh, the Saudi, thanks for the super chat. He says, uh, your videos reached the other side of the world. Keep up the good work. Hello. Yeah, I'm, Hello. I'm very grateful to hear that. And I want everybody to understand the reason that my videos have reached the other side of the world is because of you guys sharing. Because you never know, your next door neighbor may have a buddy in Saudi Arabia or in Dubai or in Russia or in Denmark, you never know. And so when you share that video, you have no way of knowing how far out into the world you, you've helped people. So thank you for all the shares. Water, 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 water. Obviously water is the optimum beverage. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sparkling water is what I prefer. Sparkling mineral water. Same. Uh, you can make your own if you have a soda stream. So you can do that. Uh, all right, Lauren. Hey, Lauren. She says, my dad has w Wagner's. Mm. Uh, granulomatosis, yep. acute kidney failure, level four. Yep. When he eats meat, creatinine levels are 6.8. After limiting re red meat, it's only 5.03. Uh, my mom says plant-based diet because she read that meat makes the body 
acidic. Yeah. So meat does not make the body acidic. I'm working on a YouTube video about do foods you eat make your body acidic or make your body alkaline? Uh, I'll give you the quick answer now. No, that's not true. That It's impossible for that to happen. Uh, secondly, with stage four CKD, uh, your dad's getting closer and closer to dialysis. At stage four CKD, he might want to eat more of a uh, maybe 50-50 plants and meat, okay? But definitely low-carb plants, low-carb veggies, because he, he in order to protect his remaining kidney function, he cannot have elevated blood sugars or elevated insulin levels. He's got to keep the carbohydrate count low. Uh, and so... It's not that meat's bad for your kidneys. That's just not true. But if he if 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 it makes your mom more comfortable, then he could eat 50-50. Half his plate with meat, half his plate with veg. That way he's happy and maybe she's happy too. Tylene says, I have Hashimoto's. My TSH is normal, but my thyroid globulin antibodies are 46. The doctor says no meds and recheck in a year. Is that normal? I have awful symptoms. Listen, th yeah, let me talk to you yeah. for a minute, sister. Have Go it. find you another doctor because feeling that bad is not normal. Oh, Having so. those extreme symptoms, which I know yeah. they're <clears throat> bad. Okay. Just because your labs are normal, that doesn't mean they are optimal and clearly they are not if you are suffering with symptoms so you go right. out you do some research yep. and you find you somebody who's going to support your yep. transition um into you know using a t3 t4 hormone replacement or medication and we'll monitor your labs significantly in the first few months because you're going to have to work on finding the right dosage yep. to fix you okay you got to find somebody who's willing to put the work in yep. to help you and also go as low carb as you possibly can and start cutting out the inflammatory yep. foods and start with dairy and nuts yep. and those kind of things you're, there's hope Absolutely. i'm i'm living proof Absolutely. Uh, but you got to find you a better and what about i done learned healthcare provider um, yeah, iodine supplementing, like if you Google, there's all kinds of information out there. Um, I supplement with iodine. I, it's the number one thing besides keto that helped me with a lot of my symptoms. So the cold, um, the pain, those kind of things that really helped. Now, you don't want to take a huge dose of it, but I, I put two drops <coughs> of 2% iodine, Lou Gauls, you can get it on Amazon every day in my coffee and it has been a game changer for me but yep. like do some research and talk to your provider yep. okay? she has videos about hashimoto's on her youtube channel i've got videos about iodine and hashimoto's on my youtube channel so now you know where to do your research and then also have a video about how to find a low-carb doctor near you and most <laughs> low-carb woke doctors also understand hashimoto's and they understand iodine and lugols and uh, also desiccated thyroid and then you can do what Nisha said and find yourself a new healthcare provider. Um, Kelly says, I'm a physician as well, and I love how I feel on carnivore, although I have some work to convince my peers. One question, I'm worried about no fruits and vegetables. I admit this. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? So, well, and I used to be worried about that too, back when I was first getting into this, uh, when I switched to kind of meat-heavy keto. And so I'd have a little veg, but it was mainly meat. I was like, what about all those magical phytonutrients and all those polyphenols? And so I really started digging into the research about what. Ex and so I want you to ask yourself this question. What exact molecule are you missing on a carnivore diet that you would be getting in grapes or bananas or mangoes? What exact bio biochemical structure are you not getting? Put a name to it. And then I, and whatever that happens, whatever pops to your mind, I want you to start researching that. And what you're going to find is all this observational epidemiological research that shows that there's a, uh, a relative risk of 1.12 or something uh, that it might be beneficial. <clears throat> you're not going to find any control research. You're not going to find any robust uh, research in the literature saying, oh, my God, if you eat lots of fruits, then you're going to have this definite physical or mental benefit. It just doesn't exist. Uh, if you're eating a balanced carnivore diet, you're going to be getting every vitamin, mineral, amino acid, and fatty acid that the human body needs without exception. And so I understand your fear. I used to have it. But the more I researched as a doctor, the more the fear just slipped away because it's like, OK, article after article after article, they'd start off. Oh, my God, you must eat fruit. And by the end of the article, I, I'm looking for their argument. I'm looking for the logic. I'm looking for their reasoning 
It's never there. It's just the headline. You got to eat fruit. So keep doing your research and keep te teaching your patients. I love I love it when we have other physicians on board. <clears throat> For a lifetime, 45 year old at uh, age 19, I had hypoparathyroid, been taking T3 only. I started carnivore two months ago, but I can't seem to lose an ounce. What should I add? Uh, you're 45 years old now. Yes. Yeah. So uh, for many people, it takes a minute on either keto or carnivore before the weight loss starts. A proverbial minute. A proverbial minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a minute. So, but, and so what we think is happening in that minute, which could be weeks or months, is that there's a, a healing that needs to occur before the weight loss can, can, can begin. There's a calming of the immune system that has to happen before the weight loss, which is your goal. I get it. But you got to understand your body's got to get in a position where it feels safe to lose weight. Losing weight 100,000 years ago out in the wild was always a bad, that was always dangerous to lose weight. But now so many of us are obese, 40, over 42% of U.S. adults are obese. Believable. Two out of five. That's crazy, right? So now weight loss is something that we want, but our bodies, you have to understand, our bodies still think we're running around on the savannah 100,000 years ago. So your body is very resistant to lose weight until you've convinced it that the environment around it is very healthy. There's plenty of fat and protein in your diet. There's tons of vitamins and minerals. Your inflammation's getting better. You're always satiated. You're never hungry. You're never inflamed. Then the weight loss usually begins. At 45, it may be a hormone issue. You may at some point want to go get your hormones checked. Make sure and get your thyroid checked with a full thyroid panel and sleep. Sleep. Um, when we talk about the proper human diet, that encompasses everything. Yep. yep. And if you are not getting enough sleep or you're not getting quality sleep, that can absolutely hinder weight loss. 100%. And most of us, I, I think, struggle with sleep especially with any kind of metabolic or thyroid issues. It's just a, a problem. And I think eventually, the longer you eat a good, healthy way of eating, the sleep will come, but that could be part of it. So you can yep. try GABA. Uh, some people like melatonin. I can't yep. take melatonin. What's the other what, one? What do you have, bad dreams? Yeah. yeah. Vivid, yeah. vivid, vivid dreams. Not vivid good. V vivid, vivid bad. bad. <laughs> yeah, end of the world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, magnesium mm -hmm. for some, but don't overload because you'll have disaster pants. So maybe, you know, look into all those things that he said, and then sleep is very important. Yep. Misty says, I resisted keto carnivore as I have NASH. I need to lose 25 pounds. Any suggestions on modifications? You don't need any modifications to either keto or carnivore. You need to pick one and your keto needs to be a real whole food, one ingredient ketogenic diet. Your NASH, which is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, is, is at one step worse than non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You actually went to the point now where you have some inflammation in your liver. You got to get rid of the fat that's definitely in your liver, livers. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. Right. And that's the next step after NAFLD. Okay, gotcha. So so you got to get rid of the fat out of your liver. That's going to help at least to some extent to calm down the inflammation in your liver. When all this is said and done, you may still you may have some permanent liver damage because of the ongoing NASH you've had for I don't know how long. Only you and your doctor know. But you're going to have the healthiest liver that you can possibly have by eating a very, very low carbohydrate real whole food, one ingredient, ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet. Fruit juice, ironic. What do you think about linolytic acid? It's supposed to be oxidative, right? Yeah, I would avoid uh, linoleic acid. I would avoid uh, everything that's rich in it. And it's not that linoleic acid is bad. Actually, that's one of the omega-6 fatty acids that we have a, a, a small daily requirement for. It's an essential omega-6 but it's a very small amount that we need, okay? And so it, you need to eliminate all the vegetable oils because they are very, very high in linoleic acid. You gotta get rid of all those and use animal fats for your cooking and that will solve that problem because animal fats have some linoleic acid. They have that little amount that you need. I'm sweating. It's hot in here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I thought it was just Mark. you. Mark says, I did carnivore for months and I loved it, but now all the fat is giving me diarrhea. My blood tests say I'm not absorbing fats properly. I've been taking a probiotic and it helps a little bit. 
What okay. is your advice? Well, uh, if you think it's the fat, which I doubt, uh, then you can try a high protein, moderate fat carnivore diet. Try that for a few weeks. Cut the fat way down and just eat more protein. Eat the lean meat and, and trim the fat and see if that fixes it. I suspect you have something going else going on causing your diarrhea. I don't blame you at all for trying a round of good quality probiotics to see if that'll help. Uh, plus or minus some fermented foods. I'm increasingly underwhelmed by the probiotic power that, that they possess. Uh, but yeah, try, try high protein, moderate fat and see if it, the diarrhea gets better. If it doesn't, then it's time to go see a gastroenterologist and say, Hey, I've got chronic diarrhea. What can you, what can you figure out? I can't pronounce that. Hi doc. Um, I'm from India. I'm on a keto diet, but when I sleep, my heart rate becomes too slow and then I have difficulty breathing. Why is this? How do you know what your heart rate is when you're sleeping? I'm assuming as a heart monitor. If you have a heart Watch. monitor, yeah, yeah, if you have a Fitbit or something, if your heart rate, a lot of us when we're sleeping, our heart rate will get down into the 50s or even the 40s. Uh, back before my the clinic fire, I had three Holter monitors, which I would put on people and, and basically watch their heartbeat for 24 solid hours. And invariably during the middle of the night from about 2 a.m., to 5 a.m., their heart rate would be in the 50s and in many people down into the 40s. That is not a sign of pathology. That's a sign that you're in deep restorative sleep. Uh, and so, but now if you're waking up short of breath, that sounds like you may have sleep apnea. And so you may want to talk to a healthcare provider about sleep apnea. You definitely do. If you're having trouble breathing, you yeah, need to see Yeah, somebody. yeah, yeah. But it's not that your heart rate, that's probably not the problem. But it's I a would, symptom. yeah, talk to your doctor about that too. Uh, Big Midge, what's up, Big Midge? What is the maximum number of acceptable carbs per day? Sugar and aspartame, free gum, one gram carbs, keto, chimichurri. Are those okay? Um, organic <clears throat> buffalo mozzarella. There's 160 grams in organic buffalo mozzarella. Of carbs? What is no, this? there's no way. There's no way. Um, I would stick, stick to 20 total grams per day. Some people don't count sugar alcohols. I say, why not count them all? And then just, you know, allot yourself you know, 10 grams yep. for sugar alcohol, yep. you're still going to yep. be able to eat them. So. Yeah. The more you do keto, the more you realize, the more it dawns on you very slowly for some of us, but surely is that carbohydrates are not really the treat that you once thought they were. And a lot of people guard their carbs like, oh no, I've got to get my 20. I've got to, got to get them. I got, I got to have them. And a lot of times that's addiction. That's habit talking. And once, once you've done keto for long enough, you realize I don't really care if I get any carbs or not. Uh, if I do, you know, as long as I keep it under 20 total, I'm okay with that. But I'm not going to go out of my way to get my carbs. And so a lot of people, they, they hold on to that sugar alcohol or they hold on to that little treat thinking that, that they're somehow they're going to be deprived if they give it up. You're not going to be deprived, I promise. Cassandra says, what do you mean by single ingredient keto? Real, whole, yep. Food. Things that don't come in a plastic bag or in a cardboard box. Things that have one ingredient. So what are the ingredients in broccoli? broccoli? Broccoli. What about hamburger? Beef. Beef. Right? That's a one ingredient food. Bacon? Bacon. Eggs. Eggs. Yeah. And, and mo many of the real fermented cheeses are also fine. But you want things that have one ingredient. Hey, Jack, 25-year-old uh, with osteoporosis. I'm taking K2 as recommended. Uh, Will fasting help when doing an extended fast? Can I still take K2 supplements? You, you can take K2 while you're fasting. That's fine. Uh, make sure that they come in, a, in an oil gel cap and, and make sure the oil is avocado or olive oil, not uh, sunflower, soybean, or canola oil. Uh, but... Fasting is probably not going to help strengthen your bones. If, you, if you're wanting to strengthen your bones, which you definitely should be wanting to do, I've got a YouTube video about how to strengthen your bones. K2, vitamin D, yes, 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 100%. But you also need to be focusing on eating lots of protein. Your bones are built of protein. They're not built of calcium like you were taught. Your bones are a collagen matrix with calcium stuck in the matrix, okay? But they're made of protein. you got to eat a high-protein diet, and you got to lift some heavy weights to build those bones. Well, they don't have to be heavy Heavy weights. for you. Heavy for yeah. you. Yeah. 
That's right. Uh, any weight bearing activity is going to help with the bone density. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Volpe, uh, my hot girlfriend has Hashimoto's and has miscarried three times. Uh, would doing keto carnivore help with this? Potentially. Probably, yeah, probably. Uh, but there may be underlying problems, thyroid yep. issues. Um, I don't know if she could have PCOS and not know it. Yep. Both keto and carnivore will help with those things, but you also need to get a diagnosis by yep. seeing a fertility specialist. There's some tests they need to run for hormones. Yep. Um, on, the, on the whole, a proper human diet is going to increase your risk of getting knocked up. Okay, there are there are over a thousand different places in the the, con the preconception, the conception cascade that can be messed up. And sometimes after you've had thorough medical examinations, they will tell you you just have undetermined. Uh, Undiagnosed. Yeah, just yeah. Un we don't know why it's Fertility. idiopathic. We don't know why you just can't conceive. Uh, but. And what are they called? What is the actual? I, I forgot. I, I blanked on it too. But but the, the take home message is you've got to be eating a nutrient dense, proper human diet. That's going to raise your risk, your chance of getting pregnant, depending on what your diagnosis is. So she's absolutely right. You got to see somebody, a skilled uh, fertility specialist uh, like our, our buddy, Dr. Kiltz in New York. He has clinics all over the New York area, I think. K I L T Z. K I, yeah, yeah. K -I -L -T -Z. Yeah. He also has it. He's on TikTok. He cracks me up on TikTok. He's got a Facebook and a YouTube channel. He's a colorful. He's very colorful. Person. Yeah, he's not boring. He uses a lot of. Yeah, but but he language. is a fertility specialist, and he would tell you one hundred percent you need to be eating your beef, butter, bacon, and eggs every single day. Keto doesn't fix everything, though. It didn't get me knocked up. That's so, right. You know, that's that's right. why you need to go to fertility. That's specialist. right. Ellen says, what about probiotic spores? Judy Cho had a great video about how they survive. Do you know about those and do you think they work? Yeah, I think some of them do survive, but the research that we're currently able to see, not enough of them survive to make a meaningful difference most of the time. Uh, I love Judy Cho. Great respect for her. She's doing great work. Uh, but, but basically, if you, th if you think about it, uh, the average probiotic, Think of the bacteria already in your gut as the Pacific Ocean. There are billions and billions of them, right? And you're going to take one drop of red food coloring. That's a probiotic. And you're going to drip it into the Pacific Ocean. Do you expect the Pacific to turn red? No, no. And, and most of the time, so few of the probiotic living bacteria or the spores make it. And not only do they have to make it to your colon, without having been destroyed by the stomach acid, they have then to then attach and become a part of the community. And that community is not accepting new memberships, okay? They're like an HOA or a country club that's closed to new members. They don't want any new bacteria because that's their turf. And so it's very, very hard for those new bacteria to actually implant and become a colony, which is what you have to have in order for them to have a, a meaningful benefit. I'm not opposed to taking probiotics, but mo for most people, the results are unimpressive. That's getting off in the weeds just a little bit, but it's not going to hurt anything. Either. Yeah, right. It's not going to hurt a thing except your 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 purse, your wallet, but <laughs> give it a try. If that's give something it a try. you feel yeah, like yeah, you yeah. need to do. Perfect love. Do you have to prove you have a thyroid problem before you can take desiccated thyroid if you seem to have symptoms? That depends on the provider. It depends on the doctor. That's right. A good one <laughs> will listen to your symptoms yep. because that is just as important yep. as what your labs say. Yep. Uh, so the lab tests for thyroid, <clears throat> the TSH has only been around for about three decades before there was a TSH test. Do you know what doctors used to decide whether they gave you desiccated thyroid? Symptoms. Your symptoms. They went by your symptoms. If you if you had multiple hypothyroid symptoms and they were very severe, they would give you a trial of desiccated thyroid and see how you and if and if that's what you needed, you would feel better. You'd be like, boom, I feel better. Huh. Then they would know, okay, there you go. Or if you felt a tiny bit better, but not enough, they'd give you a little more. They would adjust the dose. That's how it used to be done before the TSH test came out. And after the TSH test, that just became the gospel for the average overworked, bored, under-interested doctor. If the TSH is normal, I don't give a damn what your symptoms are. You ain't getting no thyroid hormone. That is improper. It's 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 immature. And it's, uneduc it's uneducated. It's ignorant. It's ignorant practice of medicine. 
So yeah, if your doctor says that you, even despite your symptoms, your labs are normal, you need to find a new doctor. I've found functional medicine providers are much more um, open to yep. symptoms yep. for diagnosing and don't rely 100% on just lab values because they work with people on a more personal level and they yep. listen a little more instead of sitting there and reading yep. your laptop and looking at the labs, they actually look at you. Yep. My provider never once looks at a piece of paper while I'm in the office with her. She looks at me. Yeah. So <laughs> the for the three or four MDs that are watching this, you need to step it up. Okay. You're, you're not treating a lab test. That's not your job. Your job is to treat patients. And you do that by looking at them, talking to them and listening to their symptoms that's what a good doctor does. Yeah. She looks at my labs, but not while I'm in the office. She already has looked at that before she steps into the room because that's all she needs to know. She needs to know how I feel after that. Very important. Very important. La Vida says, if my fibroids grew because I am pregnant, will keeping it carnivore or keto help them shrink? And should I be avoiding fat dairy due to the estrogen? Yeah, so liquid dairy, you probably should avoid it, especially fat-free or skim dairy. Avoid it 100% of the time, okay? Uh, there's actually substantial research linking hyperinsulinemia to fibroids, okay, and to endometriosis, both. And so you want to keep your insulin level as low normal as you possibly can get it. And the way you do that is by eating a very, very low-carbohydrate diet. That includes a carnivore diet. It also includes a, a meat-heavy keto diet or a ketovore diet. Any of those diets are going to keep your insulin very low, and fibroids will actually regress. They'll actually shrink. They may not go back away to nothing, but they're going to get so small that you're going to not have symptoms. You're not going to need to have a fibroidectomy. Jill is a 55-year-old postmenopausal keto and intermittent fasting. Uh, down 25 pounds. She does take desiccated thyroid. She's been taking it for a year, but she's still exhausted. Could it be the wrong thyroid med? It's probably the, not a high enough Dosage. dose. Yeah, it's probably yeah. not a high enough dose. Some doctors are very nervous prescribing desiccated thyroid. They're used to thi Synthroid and Levothyroxine, which is fake T4, but they're not used to prescribing desiccated thyroid like Armour or Nature. And so they'll give you just a little bit of a dose because they don't, they're afraid they'll hurt you. And if that's not enough of a dose, you're going to continue to have fatigue and your other hypothyroid symptoms. You got to encourage your doctor, hey, let's try a high do higher dose. Let's just try it for a couple of weeks and see how I feel. Uh, if you take too much thyroid hormone, believe me, you're not going to feel good. You're not going to want that. But a lot of doctors secretly think that patients want more thyroid hormone so they can lose more weight. But trust me, any doctor out there who's had someone with, with hyperthyroidism, they feel miserable. They feel terrible. That's not something any patient's going to want, okay? So, yeah, too high is also not yeah, going to make yeah, you feel Too high right. sucks as well. And so make sure that you had a full thyroid panel and that you know for a fact you have hypothyroidism and then encourage your doctor to raise your dose and try it for a week or a month. Valerie Martini, I have a friend, she's type 2 diabetic. She says she needs 30 grams of carbs per meal and she eats a lot of fruit. Can a diabetic go under 20 grams per carbs 100%. per day? Yeah. The reason she thinks that is because her That's dietitian told. told her that. The American Diabetes Association uh, recommends 50 or 60 grams of carbs per meal with 15 grams of carbs as a snack in between meals. Absolutely recommend that. So she's probably been told that by people who she trusts and, and looks up to and respects. It's absolutely not true. The, uh, the institutes of medicine in their study say that it is apparently there is no level of carbohydrate intake that is necessary for human life. Okay. They say that, but then they go right on to say, well, you should try to eat 130 grams of carbs a day. It's like, Literally, the, both of those sentences are in the same document. She doesn't need 30 grams of carbs in her whole day, much less than one minute. There's plenty of people watching this stream right now who are type 2 diabetics who are eating that low of carbs. So if you feel inclined to share your story in the comments so that um, this person has some uh, yeah, so, information. Some to other take evidence. Yeah, yeah, share your type 2 story and how low your carb intake is so she can see that. And then she can reassure her friend, hey, all these people are doing it. And they say they feel great and nobody died. Lachland. It's a great name. 
positive IgM for EBV for three years with persisting symptoms on carnivore for three weeks. How long should I try it? And will it uh, work for this? Yeah, you should try some version of the proper human diet for the rest of your life, whether that's keto, ketovore, carnivore. You ha that needs to be the diet that you eat because you're a human being. How long it's going to take before it affects your symptoms or if it ever make improves your symptoms, that's, that's up for debate. Uh, EBV antibodies can cause some pretty significant symptoms and some people get complete relief with keto or carnivore. Other people, it gets a little better, but it's not gone. Some people can't tell it helps at all. The only way you're going to know is to give it, I'd say at least six months, at least six, six months. months. Yeah, really? at least six wow. months okay. because EBV is a booger is. and, and the average doctor does not understand EBV. There's still a ton of research that needs to be done on this that for some reason nobody's interested in doing, perhaps because you can't get an FDA approved pill out of it. So they're not interested in spending the time and money to do the research. And there are thousands of people suffering from this and nobody's doing any research about it. Uh, Renan says, I read there's a kind of lymphoma that feeds on cholesterol as opposed to sugar. Have you heard of this? What do you think? Yeah, <clears throat> there are some forms of cancer that can use fatty acids as energy, as fuel, can limp by on eating fat for fuel. But all cancers love sugar. Sugar is their primary source for fuel. Uh, Sam Apple has a brand new book talking about Dr. Warburg's experiments. Dr. Jason Fung has an excellent book explaining this uh, called The Cancer Code. You know what it's called? Pretty sure it's The Cancer Code. So. Yeah. But yeah, all cancers love sugar. Some can use fatty acids as fuel. Yes, they can. But never can they rev up and metastasize and multiply unless they've got a good supply of sugar. Quick answers. Okay, we're running okay, out of time. Okay, all right. Uh, Kareem says, Dr. <laughs> Ken, my blood pressure is 145 over 85, and I'm on a pro approval, 300. I'm male, 40 years old, 107 kilos, 5 foot 8. I don't want to add any more medications. What should I do? Yeah, so eat keto or carnivore and realize that only the American Heart Association would tell you that your blood pressure is too high. The American Academy of Family Physicians would say that, that that's in the upper limit of normal, but that's still normal. That's, that is the cutoff for a normal blood pressure, according to most medical associations. Yeah, so I would I would keep taking what you're taking, keep lowering your carbs, and hopefully before long, you can come off that medicine too. Cardona says, Cardona Homestead. Hey, Homestead, hey. what's up? Keto Pharmacist here. What's up? Giving a shout out to all our healthcare providers, helping to improve health with food as the most powerful medicine. 100%. Whoa. Yeah. How many, put in the comments if you're a healthcare provider at any level, I want to see how many doctors and nurses and pharmacists and uh, physical, uh, physical therapists and nurse practitioners we got. Tim says, can you please explain hypoglycemia versus type 2 diabetes? My wife and I recently <clears throat> started keto two months ago. She is hypo and has yet to see any benefits and is finding it very hard. Uh, yeah, so hypoglycemia is just low blood sugar. And the majority of people with hypoglycemia they get into this cycle of eating uh, a high carbohydrate breakfast and then a couple hours later their blood sugar will crash and they'll have to eat another high carb snack and then a high carb lunch and so they have to do six meals a day of high carb or their blood sugar crashes what they don't understand is the reason that their blood sugar crashes is because of the insulin spike that came from them eating that high carb breakfast and so when the insulin goes up and pulls her blood sugar, it pulls it too low. And she feels like she needs more carbs. What your wife has got to do is slowly decrease the amount of carbohydrates in her diet. Maybe go from 100 grams, do that for a week, go to 90 grams, go to 80, go to 70. And over the course of doing that, she won't be having the blood insulin spikes and therefore she won't have the hypo levels. John Smith. <clears throat> hey guys, send in love from Australia. I have thalassemia minor. What nutrients would you recommend for me to add in to my ketogenic way of eating? You just need to eat the, all the all the minerals and all the vitamins and the amino acids and the fatty acids that are in a meat-heavy ketogenic diet or a ketovore diet or a carnivore diet. That's that's going to give you the optimal nutrition. Uh, Nunya says, can you please address hyperthyroidism? And I assume she means in keto carnivore. Yeah. So you're still a human being. You need to eat a proper human diet. If you have hyperthyroidism, you need to go see 
a, a good doctor who specializes in thyroid problems. Hyperthyroidism is a different animal than hypo. And the, whereas hypo responds very well to a proper human diet, hyperthyroidism often needs medical intervention. It is a, that's why I don't talk about it much is because you've got to fix the underlying problem, whether it's a tumor, whether it's uh, an autoimmune condition, you've got to figure out why you have hyperthyroid and get that under control. Then, and so you can be converting to a proper human diet right now, but you still got to go to a good thyroid doctor and figure out why you have hyperthyroid. I look super tiny, lean back like this. <laughs> it was like that. Yeah. That's yeah. an so, optical illusion. I mean, I am tiny, but I'm not that tiny. Jen says, I love the way coconut oil MCT makes me feel. It gives me energy. My brain seems to work better, but I get very constipated. It's supposed to have the opposite effect. Have right. you heard of this happening? Oh, no, I've you never heard that. of that happening. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Play around with the amounts, maybe. Yep. Or maybe mix some magnesium. Like some keto chow magnesium drops, put some of that in your in your MCT and stir it up. Thank you, Tina. I can't lean forward, my back's killing me. Igor, what are your thoughts on milk thistle and its effect on liver? Beneficial or is that all snake oil? It probably has a small beneficial effect, uh, but it's in no way the 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 magnanimous effect that some gurus out there that will they'll tell you that it'll just cure any any liver condition that's foolishness it, but it might have a little bit of a, a beneficial effect maybe one or two percent all right guys that's it for tonight thank you so much for joining us thanks for sharing this video thanks for the thumbs and the likes and all the other things go, uh go what, subscribe to my channel yeah, if you want to watch anything channel. i have good hashimoto's videos i do what we eat in a day vlogs yep. Sometimes Dr. Berry's on there. Sometimes Baby Beckett's on there. So head over there and subscribe to my channel. Oh, your new kitten's going to be on there. Oh, and the kitten is going to be on there. Loki, the gray kitten. He's the cutie. Yeah, he's pretty cute. Yeah. What yeah. else? What do you got coming up this week? I've got a couple of videos I'm working on. One about uh, the symptoms of zinc deficiency. I'm going to be making a video about the new Alzheimer's drug that just got FDA approved, which is very, very disappointing. Uh, and then uh, if we get internet, I'll probably just go live every damn day for a while until I get it out of my system because I got so much I want to talk about, but our internet issue is killing me. Yeah. Uh, when we get internet, we're going to be like live every five Yeah. Minutes. Yeah. Thanks so much to our patrons on patreon.com for supporting our mission to take the proper human diet to the world and reverse all the chronic medical conditions that should be very, very rare, but currently ain't. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Facebook subscribers. Thanks for the stars. Thanks for the super chats. Uh, do we love them and mean it? We love you and we mean it. Yeah. See you it. next Monday. All right, guys. Thanks Bye. so much. See you next time. Does that actually take us out? No, it didn't. Did it not take no. us out?